I want to say this is not a topic I normally speak on here at NATO. I'm usually focused on Wales to Warsaw and, and you know, other topics. Um, so this made me pause and think a little bit, and that's a good thing. So thank you for, for this, this thoughtful question. What I want to do is talk, give three examples of instances where I think uh, an understanding or appreciation of history and, and uh, cultural heritage in Afghanistan has shaped uh, U.S. and coalition policies. And they're just small examples, but I think they illustrate the kinds of lessons that we all learn uh, and have learned over the um, decade and a half uh, of our engagement uh, in, in Afghanistan. Um, <clears throat> the first of these is the use of female engagement teams. So throughout Afghanistan, when we first intervened, um, we would send patrols out from Afghan and coalition forces uh, through villages and, and, and into the countryside. And they would routinely encounter Afghan women. Um, this created a cultural clash to a certain extent because men are not supposed to interact with women uh, outside of their immediate family. And one of the things that uh, we decided to do was to, in order to both engage women who are 50% of the population uh, and avoid offending them culturally, was to develop female engagement teams that would accompany patrols. And they would interact with the women that they encountered in, in the villages. So I think this is an example of how an appreciation of the historical and, and the cultural context in this case um, led us to change the way we did business. The military has a reputation for you know, having one size fits all. Uh, here's the problem, we have, it, we have a response, and, and they just do it you know, with blinders on. Well, that's not what we did. Uh, and so I think that's one, one example. Um, a second example, um, which I think shows the effort we, we have made and are making to respect the traditions in Afghanistan, has to do with the negotiation and ratification of the bilateral security agreement that the U.S. negotiated with Afghanistan now, what, two years ago. We had reached somewhat of an impasse in our discussions with President Karzai, um, and he felt that he could not on his own uh, sign up to this document. He needed some legitimacy, some public legitimacy for the process. And he turned and gathered a lawyer jirga uh, to provide this legitimacy in a very traditional Afghan way. And it was a process that the U.S. supported wholeheartedly, notwithstanding the fact that from a U.S. point of view, there were many other ways that we would probably have gone look to first, like a public referendum or some other way to establish legitimacy or show public, public support. But the use of a lawyer jirga provided the traditional cultural legitimacy that both President Karzai needed and that the U.S. needed. And that document now has set the framework for the ongoing relationship uh, with, with Afghanistan. And the third area I want to mention is an example, I hope, of where we have learned from history and are making an effort not to repeat history. And this has to do with our efforts to sustain over the long term, the Afghan National Security and Defense Forces, largely through financial contributions uh, from key donors. As we were planning and looking ahead to the end of the ISAF combat mission and scaling down our presence to approximately 10% of what the coalition forces were at, at the height of, of the engagement, we very much focused on the need and the ways to continue to maintain and support Afghan National Security Forces, because they are the ones that now have the, have the lead in providing security for Afghanistan, and will have that uh, responsibility in the future. And one of the things we did was we looked at the historical precedent, but not too far past, of the Soviet example, when they left Afghanistan. And there's uh, kind of a conventional wisdom that when the Soviets pulled out, the Afghan forces fell apart. And that's when the Taliban ended up taking over. That's not exactly true. It was not when Soviet troops withdrew. After Soviet troops withdrew, Afghan forces 
were capable and effective for quite some time. It was when the Soviets withdrew their funding support for the security forces. And the security forces could not um, train, equip, and pay their forces that they fell apart. So we are very much committed now to sustaining the financial support for Afghan security forces, even as the military footprint of the coalition has been reduced quite substantially. So I think I would offer that as one instance of where we have looked at <laughs> Afghanistan's, or at least one element, one segment of Afghanistan's very complicated history, uh, and tried to draw an appropriate lesson and do better this time, and, and do things a little bit differently to reflect the context uh, in which we're operating. 